Hey there, everyone. Well, this is going to be a fun one, and there is a lot to talk about here. See, for those not familiar with this watch, I am very late to the party with this review, almost three years. The reason for that is simple. I didn't know about it. You may think that I'm watching every other channel or reading all the sites, but like those other guys, I don't have the time as I'm doing my own thing with reviews and the site and social media, and there's just always so much time in the day. I did come across this Ithias Abyssi on Instagram though, but not through the company as they have zero social media presence. No, I came across it through an account I follow. He's just a watch nerd like the rest of us, and I happened to catch his post on this watch that he owns. I then sent off an email to the company to get this watch for review, and here we are. The good thing is, I'm glad I didn't review this watch till now, as the price is now $500, at least $200 off the original price. And this is powered by an SW200. That all sounds great, but as always, how does the watch stack up otherwise, and is it worth it? This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Let's get into the review and find out. So when it comes to the design of this watch, I have heard everything from Citizen Divers to Omega 300 Seamaster, Damasco, and even Christopher Ward. So no, it's not a straight up homage to any of them, but you could definitely see some similarities to a few watches. I'll put up all the specs on the screen, but for $500, you get a lot of watch for the money. This version that I have is the matte blue dial, but also available is gloss blue and gloss black. Nothing changes besides the dial color between them and all will have a brushed stainless steel case with polished chamfers. You also get a 120 click bezel and a titanium bezel insert. Yes, titanium, more on that in a bit. As I stated, case design can, can be compared to a few, but comparisons to the Christopher Ward are apt, especially the way the case is cut out and flared on each side, and the protruding crown guard, and an even more protruding crown. Overall, the case is nicely finished, though when you look close, this is not a heavy grain brushing on the watch, especially on the case sides. It's kind of a cross between a brushed and polished finish, almost like it was fully polished first, then a light brushing applied. The underside of the case and lugs are hotspot free. I can't say the same for the crown. The crown is deeply grooved. It allows for a great purchase, but the very top edges of it where it meets the engraved logo has a sharpness to it you can feel with your finger. I can also feel it while on the wrist, but there's a reason for that, more on that in a bit as well. The dial is clean and easy to read with large printed indices and hash marks. This matte blue dial is really beautiful and great for the casual sport type watch, but going with the glass dials probably dresses this one up a little bit more. I've seen a few comment that the hands are too small, not necessarily short in length, but in width. They probably could have gone up a size in the sword hand department, especially with the large 12 o'clock indices overpowering the dial. Also on the dial is the brand and model name, something I haven't touched on yet, and I won't harp on it, but Ithias Abyssi really doesn't roll off the tongue that easily, and I think they could have done better. It is what it is, I guess. Covering the dial is a flat sapphire, has a good internal AR coating, and the bezel action really is lovely on this piece. The odd element here is the blast to titanium bezel insert. Now, the bezel looks really good, and I like the gray tone to it, and it is fully loomed, but most have pointed out that titanium can scratch easily. Well, a lot of watches have aluminum bezel inserts, and aluminum scratches easily as well. So, I don't think it's a big deal, and again, I like the look of the titanium insert used here. The solid case back is pretty simple, but those are water molecules on the back, giving it a little design that is, of course, appropriate for a dive watch. And beating underneath is a regulated SW200. Yes, while not the original price of this watch, you can get an SW200 powered watch for $500. Now, speaking of dive watch, I have long stated I'm not a diver. But on the Ithias website, it states this watch was designed for the recreational diver. I'm not sure how many recreational divers need a 300 meter dive watch. 200 meters would have probably been more than suffice. 
But something I forgot to point out is that these watches are apparently all designed, assembled, regulated, and pressure tested in the USA, Washington State to be exact. So before I get to one of the best aspects of this watch, let's talk about one of the worst. That would be the bracelet, and there's a lot to unpack here. If you're in a hurry and don't want to listen to me talk about a bracelet for three minutes, I'll let you know right now, it's not a good bracelet. At all. Firstly, I feel 22 millimeters is too wide for the bracelet and lugs. This watch head is only 41 millimeters wide, and while 13 millimeters isn't exactly thin, with this scalloped thin mid case, this watch is more on the svelte side, yet the wide bracelet throws it off in my opinion. 20 millimeters tapering to 18 would have slimmed this watch down even more. The good news is the end links fit really well to the case, perfect fit as far as looks go, and these are female end links as well. And coupled with the just barely 47 millimeter lug to lug measurement, this watch really drapes on the wrist and should fit smaller wrists as well as larger ones nicely. My wrist is seven and a half inches if this is your first time here, and if it is, go ahead and make sure to hit that subscribe button. The Lynx used a pin collar system. They're a little annoying to size, but they're strong and you shouldn't have to worry about them ever backing out. But here are the real issues. Notice how much room is in between the Oyster style Lynx and how much sway they have. This is just not a tight fit Lynx system, and it makes you wonder how long it will hold up in the long run. Another issue I ran into while photographing this watch is how the links rub against each other and scratch the link below. You can see the bracelet has rub marks all over it. This is not from wear and tear. This is from it being on my table and moved around to do photography and video. As you can see, the watch head is pretty much pristine. The other issue is the clasp. For a watch that did so many things to produce a well-made dive watch, they sure screwed the pooch on the clasp. No diver's extension, only one micro adjustment in the clasp, and with no removable half links, it doesn't leave a lot of room for a good fit. I really can't get a great fit with this bracelet either. It fits me better right now at the time of recording as the weather has warmed up, so it is slightly tighter, but still a little looser than I would normally wear. And one final thing about this clasp, it makes a hell of a lot of noise. Go ahead and listen to the rattle. Now back to some good. This watch could probably win a lot of loom battles with loads of C3X1 loom applied to the dial, hands, and bezel insert. The loom pip and minute hand is green with the rest icy blue, done to be easily discernible when underwater, and this thing just glows and glows and glows. I can't say anything negative here, A++ on the loom. So my biggest disappointment with this piece is definitely the bracelet and clasp, but I think we need to put that all into perspective. When this watch was released towards the end of 2019, it was north of $700. I'm not sure on the exact price, but somewhere around $750. Then it went to $635, and now here we are at $500. At $750, these issues are more severe. At $500, they're a lot more forgivable, in my opinion. Take the bracelet off and throw it on a nice rubber. There are so many rubber straps out there these days, and quite a few that will look good on this piece. It looks like Ithias had plans for a rubber strap, or maybe they did release one, but it sold out but I couldn't find images, images of it on their site, even though they still have a menu tab for it. And of course we have the movement. And these days, an SW200 at this price and a watch that isn't a direct homage or catalog piece is kind of a big deal. One thing to keep in mind though, I do not know how long Ithias is going to be around. The company was started by two brothers, both watch enthusiasts, and this was a good first offering but that was over two years ago. This is still their only model. They have zero social media and the price keeps going down, which seems like they're just trying to dump the stock that has not sold out in over two years. and makes me wonder how many they even sold. I wanna hear from you though, as always, let me know your thoughts on the Ithias Abyssi, good or bad, down in the comments section below. 
There will be a written review linked below as well, and also a link to the brand's website. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.